So, Mark, the story so far, you've finished the On Every Street tour. Why didn't you go away and make another Dire Straits record? Oh, gosh, well, I mean, after that, you need to have at least five minutes to turn around and remember your name. <laughs> when I did start writing songs again, uh, one of the first things that I wrote was uh, something that needed uh, Julian pipes and fiddles and accordions, and so I went to Ireland, and um, a friend of mine, Paul Brady, set up a group. I found myself chasing songs around the world to a certain extent. It was to Ireland, Tennessee, Louisiana, London, back to uh, Ireland, back to Nashville, and then so on and so forth. It did take quite a long time to make this record. Why did it take so long? In fact, the whole record was just, it wasn't that much studio time. There were just a series of sessions, really. I was just enjoying it so much. More of the songs were requiring another, another approach. Um, plus, there were a lot of players that I wanted to play with. You play in with, with traditional Irish musicians on this album and also, obviously, traditional country musicians or American country musicians. What's their attitude to you? They, they definitely give you a feed you a line in Nashville. And it's probably, they probably think it's a bit wacky. The Irish guys were great because I'd, I'd say, is it is my Celtic music, you know, I'd say, is it, uh, is it Irish? And it's, oh, no, it's, it's Scottish. And I said, uh, well, how's that? And he said, he said, oh, well, you can tell by the intervals. Uh, I spent the first few years of my life in Scotland, but my mother's a Geordie, and in Newcastle we sang all those lovely old Geordie tunes and uh, Tyneside tunes, the Water of Tyne, things like that that stay with you all your life. I've always been a sucker for a great melody, and uh, not that I've ever written any, but the... So does this feel like this is your Roots album? No, it's not. And uh, it's not a blues album and it's not a folk roots album or, at all. It's, uh, it's different. I like messing with the forms anyway. I don't believe in purism. We wouldn't have flamenco music or, or we wouldn't have tango or we wouldn't have rock and roll music if people hadn't messed with uh, roots music. And... Mark, why did you decide to call the album after the track Golden Heart? I suppose really because uh, uh, a lot of the songs uh, seem to me to be maybe more about the heart than, than the head. I, <laughs> I think any record you make, I suppose, is an element of where it's, 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 it's personal. I remember on my first album, uh, my mum saying, oh, you were getting a lot off your chest, weren't you? This album is then much more an emotional statement. More of it, although there are these. The occasionally you'll get this creepy thing happening. You know, occasionally I'll do songs about creepy people. And really, all the time I'm working on these songs, I'm thinking, well, I don't like this song as much as you are my sunshine. There's a track on the album which has got echoes of uh, Walk of Life. Yeah, Cannibals. Yeah. Was that a conscious, like you quoting from your own past? Well, yes, actually, uh, cannibals... Um... Cannibalising your own repertoire. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, actually not the repertoire, but cannibalising my own past. Certainly, I must have been a little boy and I was having a, a nightmare and, and uh, I must have pretended that I was dreaming about cannibals. And I remember my dad saying, once upon a time there were cannibals, now there are no cannibals. I go back to sleep. It's again, there's a whole rag bag of stuff in there. There's Chuck Berry, there's Promised Land, there's... Uh, and there's a Cajun uh, thing. Let's talk about the first track, which is also the single, Darling Pretty. What inspired that song? The songs can go in groups. They seem to have ended up in little groups on this record. And it's a kind of, it's just like, like the other song, Je suis désolé. And it's new beginnings, really, I suppose, as a touch of that. It has that feeling of, of movement, of intention. Cast away the chains, darling, pretty. Cast away the chains, away the mind. Take away my pain, darling, pretty. And the chains that I once were yours. Was this a more enjoyable record to make than others you have made? Yes. I mean, I love making on every street too. This one was different because of a lot of traveling about and 
hanging around with some really, really great players, and uh, I just feel really, really privileged to have been able to do it. And that's one of the things that I love about being successful, is that you can get to play with some of these uh, wonderful guys, and uh, you know, some of them will actually be touring as well, which is unbelievable. I love to write, and I love to record, and I love to rehearse, and I love to tour. And if you love all, f all, all the aspects of the cycle, that makes you a very lucky boy. Uh, and uh, in my case, a very lucky menopausal male. <laughs> did you feel somewhat overawed playing, it sounds as if you did, playing with some of the people on the album? Every now and again, I'd been going over to do sessions for people uh, over there in, in Nashville. There are some real genius players working there day in, day out. They only get 25 minutes to get the secret of a song when they're working normally. And that's not long enough in my book. So how do you work with them? Do you just sort of give them some chord shapes and tell them to get on with it? Or do you direct them a bit more than that? It depends on the song. You, you don't direct great players really that much. People work things out for themselves and they express themselves in the parts, I think, quite a lot. And they, What's exciting about working with them is that you're straight away in the business of making a record. Uh, um, the thing starts to happen very quickly. And that, 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 was, that was really exciting to do. And you know, all of a sudden you, you know that you're in the business of making a song, that this thing's happening. And um, for some reason you, you never really, you never find yourself flogging a dead horse at all. You're just always uh, cracking along with something great. And to have players of that caliber around you all the time, it may maybe it just makes you raise your own game a little bit. rehearsing in Nashville is is that um, I was outvoted really on the numbers you see they're all well three of them are well four of the group are, are Americans so and um, and that's just really so Guy and I were really really outnumbered and it just made more sense to do it that way it's easier for them really and we're just such nice guys that we just accommodated them it's a great process I love rehearsing you know, there's never too much, as far as I'm concerned. I, I think we're going to do about six weeks of rehearsals. It's fun to work these tunes up and see where they go, how they evolve, uh, what they can develop into that perhaps is different from what the record was. Uh, Richard Bennett is a, I'm sure, why lots of kids are taking up guitar. He's one of those real fearless, uh, inventive uh, players who really put the twang into uh, a lot of the music down here. Working <laughs> with Mark was great. It was fantastic. It was a it was a high water mark experience for me. There's nothing like a great drummer. He's just the heartbeat of the whole thing, and it was just a real, real pleasure work. When I was recording with Chad, a couple of times we'd look up and look at each other and knew that it was um, it, uh, that it was not exactly love, but uh, you know when it's happening at the uh, yeah at the same time. In 1983, I met Mark, and um, we worked on a film score, Cal. And uh, we got on rather well. And um, he asked me to join Dire Straits in 84, and uh, we recorded the Brothers in Arms album. And since then, we've done, um, I've worked quite a lot with Mark. We've done um, quite a few soundtracks, Princess Bride and um, Last Exit to Brooklyn. And um, the last, of course, the last Dire Straits album, On Every Street. I've never um, not really worked with Guy. I've never, well, it goes back to really the, the Cal soundtracks. I've never had an argument with him. He's a lovely guy. Uh, and um, I think if he practices, he might, he might come on quite a bit. 
Well, I'm looking forward to playing with Jim, as a matter of fact. Jim and I have played together, uh, even though we never met, we're on an Aaron Neville thing. We had cut the track, and Mark came in later and put on the solo, and so we worked together electronically and transcontinentally, I guess, not, not person to person. When Mark would bring a song in, he would simply sit down with his guitar and play it to us. And at that point, everybody, I think, is, is again listening sort of unconsciously, just trying to find out what the song's about, maybe get a bit of an image of which instrument should I play on this song? What should my sound be like? Um, well, I first saw Glenn playing when I walked into a club in Nashville years ago. And I knew then, as soon I had I'd, I'd hardly even got through the door. It was. Um, one or two steps, I was standing very, very near him, and I just knew from the way he was playing and the, the sound of this music was coming out. It was just terrific. He's like all of these guys. He's like Guy or, or Chad, Richard. Everything that he plays is soulful. It's not a question of, of, of it ever just ha having no attitude. That's the, really the, the thing about this band. I think they're like a, above everything else. It's a kind of fearlessness and it's a kind of um, willingness to just to have a crack at, at, at almost anything. Richard will dive into his big trunk of, of instruments open and just rummage around and produce something that he's, he wants to explore. And it's the same way. We we'll, can play an upright bass or fretless and he'll just you know have a little think and think about his part. It's always fascinating to watch it grow because there is a very real dialogue that happens between the players. Uh, good players, anyway, have that ability to sit with instruments and have a musical conversation just as you would with another person. Through the course of a whole day, uh, we would come around to, to playing the song in its entirety, you know, many hours later. And it was a real interesting way of doing it because you would never really waste your energy on something that wasn't fully developed and understood by all the guys and, and, and as far as us getting our parts together for the song. So by the time we get around to, to actually performing the song, it's still like a fresh take to us, you know? It's pretty embarrassing sometimes, you know, because if you're with these musicians, I mean, they're singing, they're playing with great, great singers all the time. It was Dolly Parton yesterday, you know, me the next, thank you very much. It's time to come away, darling. Mark's conversational style of singing to me is one of my favorite ways of hearing a singer sing. He's the songwriter, they're his songs, and only he can sing them that way. Heal me with a smile, darling. To me, the, the, the most defining factor of, of a truly great voice is their believability. Mark does have that gift of being able to really pull you into the song. Looking forward to playing with Mark. It's, uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a great band. I mean, the, the, it's a great record. Once they sent me the CD, it was pretty much, I just said, what do I wear? It's, uh, it, it, there was no question about wanting to go on the road. You need to get away. You need to do something different. This is the best different thing to do in the world. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing where this band takes all the stuff we've recorded and how we're going to, you know, how we're going to translate the Dire Straits stuff. It's just a tour of Europe that we're doing, that starting in Ireland. And I'm, I'm sorry about the, the fact that it's so short, but already really um, regretting the end of it because I know we're going to have a lot of good times. This album that uh, we've done, the Golden Heart album, is probably the the top two or three moments out of 30 years that I've had of making records. It's, it's brilliant. Golden Heart is just unbelievable. And just, man, the songwriting just is phenomenal. I'm just looking forward to playing, playing with these guys. It's always fun to play with Mark. It's always great to play with Mark. Golden Heart.